Good morning, family. How are you doing today? We are still in the throes of the COVID pandemic. There are surges across the nation. These are interesting days. We're torn between caution and anxiety. Caution about the spread of COVID-19, anxiety about being isolated. Society is shifting. Our culture is changing. And it remains to be seen what our future will look like. Will things ever go back to normal? What will the new normal be? And yet, despite all these uncertainties, Jesus still calls us to follow him, to live and love like him. How do we do that? Well, so far we've seen that Jesus had compassion on people who are harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And we are called to be compassionate as well. Last week, Jesus told us that to be his follower, to be his disciple, we must first acknowledge him, attest to our allegiance to Jesus in front of others. Secondly, we are to love Jesus, love God more than all others. And thirdly, we must be willing to give up everything for him. Well, today in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus continues to instruct us on how to be his loyal followers. Hear the word of the Lord. Those who receive you are also receiving me, and those who receive me are receiving the one who sent me. Those who receive a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Those who receive a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. I assure you that everybody who gives even a cup of cold water to these little ones, because they are my disciples, will certainly be rewarded. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's a disturbing time right now, especially in our public discourse in America politicized and polarized. Our public discourse has devolved into the ugly, take no prisoners, burn it all down rhetoric. Hurtful us versus them ideologies march themselves across the American stage. Hysterical screams of fear-infused hatred are heard in our nation of immigrants. Build a wall. Go back where you came from. Don't tread on me. Are we entering a dark age where the only thing we can build is a wall and where nothing is sacred but a gun? It's a legitimate concern. And not only is my heart heavy for America, my heart is heavy for the church. Has the church become a religious version of our ugly age? Or can we actually be the alternative counterculture of Jesus? Can we grow and develop enough spiritual maturity to be a Christ-like community of radical love and mercy? If we don't, I'm afraid we will become the next blockbuster video, right? Blockbuster video used to be everywhere. Once there were thousands of blockbuster stores. Now there is only one store left in America. If we don't engage in kindness and in hospitality, the church could go the way of blockbuster video. The Torah tells us, the strangers who sojourn with you shall be to you as the natives among you, and you shall love them as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. In the New Testament, Jesus tells us to welcome the stranger, for what you do to the least of my brethren, you do unto me. This morning we heard Jesus say, Everybody who gives even a cup of cold water to the least or the less than, out of love for Jesus, will certainly be rewarded. This is Jesus' call to us. It's a call to hospitality. Remember, Jesus is talking to us about discipleship or followership, about how we can live and love like Jesus. And an important factor is hospitality. For the record, authentic hospitality is not just a Christian thing. 
Most faith traditions teach us to welcome our brothers and sisters with love and compassion. In the faith traditions that are shaped by the Bible, offering hospitality is a moral imperative. God expects his people to be the kind of folks who welcome strangers. There's an expectation that God's people will cultivate hearts of hospitality rather than hearts of hostility. Just as God protected the people of Israel, God insists that his people care for foreigners and that they treat them like they belong there. God's people are to be a people whose graciousness and hospitality flow from hearts filled with God's love. To welcome others, particularly those who are different from us, is to acknowledge them as made in the image of God. Hospitality, then, not only welcomes strangers, but also recognizes their holiness and receives their blessings. You see, the biblical test for loving God is loving your neighbor. And the biblical test for loving your neighbor is loving your enemy. Make sure you catch that. The biblical test for loving God is loving your neighbor. And the biblical test for loving your neighbor is loving your enemy. That's why, throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus offering hospitality to friends and to enemies, to neighbors and to strangers, to Jews and to Gentiles, to men and to women. Jesus fed thousands. He gave his time to outcasts. Jesus listened to what people had to say. He made them feel wanted, loved, and valuable. And that's what he expects his people, his disciples, his followers to do. Jesus went so far as to say, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. If the church in America is to recover any relevance, it won't be through a public emphasis on what is true, though there is a time and a place for that. And it won't be through a public emphasis on the good, though there's a time and a place for that too. But if the church in America is to recover any relevance, if we're going to be authentic representatives of Jesus, it will be through the authentic practice of hospitality. If we can be so filled and formed by Jesus that we begin to live hospitable lives, if we can embrace and welcome and love those who are different from us, regardless of race, gender, religion, or anything else that may give us cause to ignore or discriminate, then we, the church, will gain a new hearing. If not, we deserve to be ignored because we will not look and love and live like Jesus. Everybody who gives even a cup of cold water to these little ones, because they are my disciples, will certainly be rewarded. A cup of cold water, that's all. What is a cup of cold water? It's something as simple as sharing a cup of coffee with someone, or wearing a face mask to protect others or giving someone a ride, or running errands for someone, or simply listening. A cup of cold water. That's not a huge ask, is it? It's not only a gracious act of hospitality, but it is a dangerous act. A cup of cold water assumes that we notice that someone is thirsty and that we are willing to go to the well and draw water and then offer it. Someone suggested that a simple act of love and caring might lead us to pull up a chair, and to begin a conversation, and to learn about the person and to learn about their life. It might lead us to prayer 
and to phone calls and to being drawn into life and relationship with this other person. It might lead to you learning about their hopes and their fears. Showing hospitality most likely will lead us to share feelings we would rather not know. Like how a young American born child feels as she holds back her tears and says, I hold the Mexican flag in one hand and the American flag in another. Being hospitable might mean feeling outraged when we hear that a young black boy runs and hides every time he sees a police car drive through his neighborhood. Or how a black mother can't go grocery shopping without being shadowed by the store manager. Or how my Asian American friend has been harassed and blamed for causing the COVID-19 virus. Or how LGBTQ people fear for their lives or consider suicide because of the abuse and rejection that they experience. Hospitality of the heart, not hostility, helps us to understand the poor and the oppressed. Hospitality of the heart leads us to support the last, the least, and the lost. Hospitality of the heart changes the way we see the world. It changes our perceptions and our attitudes. Hospitality of the heart influences our values and priorities. It enlarges our hearts. It calls us to seek reconciliation. Hospitality of the heart leads us closer to Jesus and makes us more like Jesus. God calls us to care and to help and to heal. And Jesus asks us to prioritize the needs and well-being of others. My prayer is that we would know the joy and the suffering of interconnectedness. May we, inspired by Jesus and empowered by the Holy Spirit, practice hospitality and care for others the way Jesus cares for them. Because practicing hospitality just might be the holiest thing that we can do. Amen? Let's pray. Good and gentle God, you are love and you are mercy. For your patience, which seems at times endless, we give you thanks. Like children who wander off and cause parents to despair, so we test the limits of your love. But you are always there when we get lost. You are always there when we need help. You are there with open arms. You are there to welcome the wanderers as a loving father waiting to bring us home. You are there with a cup of cold water. Help us to learn from you and with the help of your spirit to be more like you. In this time of bewilderment and fear, we ask you to give us the courage to take care of one another as Jesus did. Help us to be hospitable. Help us to see and to recognize to care and to actively assist those who are in need. We pray for those who are ill, whether it be the coronavirus or other ailments. We pray for those who experience injustice and discrimination. We pray for those who fight for justice and equity. And now using the words debts and debtors, let us pray with boldness the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Thanks again for joining me today. Don't let these days of change and uncertainty rob you of your joy. With Jesus, we always, always, always have hope because God loves you no matter what. You have heard the gospel. It is for you. God is with you and he is for you. 
Now receive these words of benediction today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.